Welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to take a look at creating full screen background images for your website using CSS and CSS3. So we're going to look at two separate techniques for this. One uses CSS, the other one uses CSS3. They're both pretty easy, they're both effective. Um, one is a little bit less code than the other um, and we're going to have some fun with it. So we're going to take uh, this image and we're going to apply it as the background for a website. So here's the example. You can see I've placed it as the background for this website. If we scroll down, the image stays fixed back there in the background, which is really neat. And also, if I resize the window, you can see the image is sort of kind of moving around and scaling with the window. So now that we've taken a look at that, let's jump in and make this thing work. And the first thing about creating a website with a background image is, well, it makes the website look really cool if you have a really cool image and a really high quality image. And that's what I want to talk about here for just a brief second is you really want to have a large image. I would say something that's at least 2,000, 2,500 pixels wide, something like that. So we're not worrying about it being too small and having to stretch out to fit larger monitors. So if you have that, you can see I've got this image here, 2,122 pixels by 1,412 pixels. So it's pretty big, um, big enough for our uh, site and our project that we're working on here now. So I've dragged it into my site. I've got it here in the images folder. It is named fullscreenbg.jpg and we're going to go ahead and add this to our website. So the first technique that we're going to do is a pure CSS technique. It's not CSS3, it's just regular old CSS. So let's go ahead and start with this one. This one, I'm gonna jump into code view and this is probably all we're really gonna go into code view, so don't worry. Um, well, for this technique at least, we're gonna use code view for CSS3, so we're gonna have a mixture of both here because you really wanna be working in code view at least eventually. Uh, it's not as scary as it looks. So here's what we're looking for. We're looking for the opening body tag, right? here you can see a body so what I want to do is add one line after that and we want to drag our image right in there immediately after the opening body tag so I'm going to take full screen bg.jpg and I'm going to drop it right there it's going to say hey would you like to add alternative text really I should but I'm not going to and there we go img you can see the source and the width and height great so we're going to save this and we're going to go back to design view now in design view you can see all we see is image and in fact, our entire website has been pushed beneath this image. That's all right. We're going to take care of that in just a second. So what I need to do first is select this image and assign an ID to it. So I'm just going to select the image and it's selected as much as we can't tell. Well, you can see there's an anchor handle. So it is selected. We're going to go window properties and the properties panel is going to pop up and we're going to give this an ID. I'm going to name it uh, FSBG for full screen background. Um, and we're just gonna click away and you can see now this has an ID of FSBG assigned to it. And to keep things simple, we're just gonna use Dreamweaver CSS tools for this particular technique. You can hand code this and if you know how to hand code, you're probably gonna know how to follow along and hand code what I'm punching in. We're gonna hand code the CSS3, uh, like I said, so we can get a little taste of both. But for those of you that aren't too comfortable with hand coding yet, um, we're just gonna use Dreamweaver CSS tools. So we're gonna open up the CSS styles panel and uh, you can go window CSS styles as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new CSS rule. So we're going to say, yep, it's for an ID. And here the ID is already filled in because we have this image selected. So hashtag FSBG. So that's the marker for an ID in CSS. And for the rule definition, we're going to say, hey, this document only. Again, I like to work in an external style sheet almost 100% of the time there are exceptions to the rule um, but just to keep things simple there's really nothing technically wrong with working in this document other than the fact that it's just not maybe the fastest or cleanest and I don't know there are there are some reasons why uh, we don't work in the that HTML document all the time but again to keep things simple we're just gonna work in this document only so go ahead and hit OK and the, most of the CSS styles we can apply right here through the CSS rule definition dialog box. So the first thing we're going to look to do is go to box and we're going to set the width to 100%. So 100 and then I don't want pixels, I want percentages. And then we're just going to set height to auto. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. We can see we have some changes going on. That's good. Then we're going to go to positioning. And I'm going to position this fixed. So the reason that we're choosing fixed position is because we want our website to scroll over our image. We don't want the image to scroll with the website, but we want the website to kind of be locked in there. 
Uh, again, you can see our width and height, that's great. We're going to set a placement top zero, so make sure you're always jammed way up to the top, and also to the left. So all the way up in that top left corner, we want the top left corner of our image. And we're also going to set a Z index of like negative 100. This is just sort of like, if you envision your website as a series of layers, this is gonna be layer negative 100. So, you know, in theory, it's always gonna be beneath everything else, which is a little important because we want our website to be on top of the background we create for it, right? So now we need to add two little bits of CSS manually. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. It's gonna apply those changes if we haven't hit the apply button already. And check this out down here. We can add properties uh, manually as well as through the dialog. And the only reason I'm adding these manually is because these aren't in the dialog, at least as far as I know. So we're gonna add property. And the first one we're gonna do is min height. There we go. And I want the minimum height to be, well, 100% because I want this to always be going from top to bottom. We want this to sort of, uh, you know, stretch proportionally. We want to, you know, it's always gonna be 100% height. And I'm gonna add another property of minimum width. And this is going to be, I'm gonna say 1040 pixels. Uh, you want it to be fairly wide. Oops, we need, don't need to put PX in there. Uh, 1,040 pixels. I'm, I'm choosing that number because I know the width of my wrapper is 1,040 pixels for my website, like the content area of the website is 1,040 pixels. So I'm just rolling with that number. Um, there are a lot of people who I see, you know, going with like 10, 24, whatever. Uh, it's a few, a few pixels off. Um, but that's what I'm going with here. So I'm going to drag CSS styles back over to here and let's just preview this in the browser. I'm gonna save my document, and you can see here that it still looks like it's gonna be messed up, um, but we're not gonna concern ourselves with that. I'm going to go back out to Magic Hat. Well, actually, I'm going to, I'm just gonna preview the website fresh by hitting F12, and we can see this is our, our website, and we've got this image in the back, which looks great, and when we scroll down our page, the, the image stays put. It doesn't move all over the place. If I Scroll the window, you can see the image scrolls a bit, which is very nice. It is always 100% of, uh, of the height of our window, right? It's staying 100% of the height. So we never have to worry about um, that going all out of joint and having you know, openings and stuff at the top or bottom or anything like that. And it's also stretching 100% across the screen because remember we set that width to 100%. The minimum width is 1,040 pixels, but the overall width is 100%. So. Now that we've done it that way, that's the regular CSS way. That way is gonna work in uh, Chrome, Firefox, Opera, Safari, and it also is gonna work in Internet Explorer 7, 8, and 9, uh, Internet Explorer 6. If you run into someone still using Internet Explorer 6, take their computer from them. Don't, don't let them use a computer because they're being very, very irresponsible. Um, in fact, maybe that goes for anyone using Internet Explorer at all. But that's the regular CSS way. Let's take a look at the CSS3 technique. So I'm gonna jump into my code and I'm going to delete that image. And I'm also, you can see here's the CSS that got dropped in for us. I'm gonna delete that as well. And what I've got here is just a link to another CSS document which I've commented out. So I'm gonna uncomment that out and again, if you understand how external style sheets work, uh, this is gonna make complete sense to you. However, let me just backtrack for a second. If you don't wanna use an external style sheet, all you have to do is get rid of this type here and all the code that I'm about to write in my CSS document, you can write here as long as you're in between the, the opening and closing style tags. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and start writing this code for uh, the CSS3 method of doing this. It's actually pretty simple. It's just a couple lines of code. Like I said, you're gonna drop yours in here. I am going to uncomment my link to my external style sheet just because I can. So I'm gonna save this and then I'm going to open up my other style sheet, which is this document right here. You can see it's just a, basically a blank CSS file. So we're gonna begin by targeting body. So I'm gonna say body, open curly bracket, and then enter return a couple times, close curly bracket, and then use the up arrow key to get in between those two curly brackets. And the first thing we need to do is just set this image as the background image. So we're gonna type the word background, and we can use Dreamweaver's uh, little hinting here and say, yep, URL. And we're gonna go to images and we're gonna choose right here, full screen BG, hit okay. And the first thing we're gonna do is say no repeat. We don't want it to repeat. And we wanna center it. We're gonna type in the word center twice because we wanna center it horizontally as well as vertically. And we're also going to say fixed. 
because we want this uh, the positioning of this background image to be fixed. Again, remember before we set the positioning of our other image to fixed as well. We didn't want it to go, you know, moving way up and down and all over the place. So we're going to set this as fixed as well. And now what we need to do is set the background size to cover. So we could just say background size cover. However, this works in sort of all the modern browsers, but even some of the good browsers like Firefox and Chrome, and I guess you could even lump in uh, Safari and Opera, um, not all of the older versions of them quite support this. So what we're going to do is we're going to be a little bit more specific here. We're going to say hyphen M-O-Z. Actually, let's, uh, let's just start with WebKit. Why not? It's usually what I do. Hyphen WebKit, background size, cover. Right, so WebKit is what Chrome uses. Hyphen MOZ, background size, cover, and MOZ is what Firefox uses. Oh, I'm sorry, WebKit is what Chrome and Safari both use. Um, and then we're gonna go hyphen O, background size, cover, and O is what Opera uses. So using those, we're gonna you know basically say all right, background cover or background size, cover. But also, if it's not quite working out for you, hey, Chrome and Safari, here's this little bit of code for you. Hey, Firefox, here's this little bit of code for you. And Opera, same goes for you. Go ahead and read this. Uh, so there we go. We're going to save this and go back to our main document. And you can see we now just have a white background. That texture has been overridden, and we have a white background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit F12 to preview this. And you can see that we have a full screen background as well. In fact, I probably should have used a different background because it just looks the same, right? Um, but if I make this whoop, if I make this smaller, you can see we're scaling down and it works just like it should. Um, and it's just a few less lines of code. Um, but you know, we can take this little bit of code and you can paste it right in up there in the head as long as you're between those style tags like, like I mentioned earlier. And that's really it. That is how you create a full screen background using both regular quote unquote pure CSS. CSS3 is still regular CSS, but there's a difference. So using CSS and also CSS3. Now the CSS3 method works um, in Google Chrome. It works in Firefox as long as you're newer than, I wanna say Firefox 3.6, I have to double check on that. Uh, Opera 10, as long as you're in something newer than Opera 10, it's gonna work and Safari 3 or newer, and it also works in Internet Explorer 9 or newer. So that is how you create a full screen background using CSS and C or CSS3 in Adobe Dreamweaver CS6. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Hope you learned a thing or two. Make sure you go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com for more video tutorials. Thanks for watching.